Lottari J. Conti. Uh, good morning, sir. I came from Kemi and proceeding to Kokola. I stuck in the ice over. Yes, uh, I can see you are stuck in the ice. Uh, stand by. Uh, standing by. From December to May, the ports of northern Finland are icebound, or would be were it not for ships like the Contio, an icebreaker. Icebreakers are not like other ships. Icebreakers have thicker and pugnaciously shaped hulls and far more power than a normal vessel of the same size. And working on an icebreaker is not like working on other ships. Mika Ulakoski is a first officer on the Contio. While he's on watch, he does most of the steering, looking ahead, but also at the vessel behind. First time I came as a navigator, I was like, oh my god, we are like meters away from another ship, but you get used to it. In a merchant marine, you're trying to stay away from other ships and uh, keep them away, but here, here you're trying to keep them almost as close as possible. Icebreakers have to get close to other ships to lead them through the channels they've cut through the ice, to tow them if the ice is especially tough, to break them out when they get stuck. Veli Lukala is Contio's captain on the 10-day deployment that Monocle joins, keeping open the narrow and crooked channels in and out of the Finnish port of Oulu in the Bay of Bothnia. It's not inherently dangerous, but you have to be able to read the ice I surround the vessels, you have to have the knowledge, you know, you have to have the vision in your head what to do, from which side to pass, how to try to cut the vessels loose, and that again you have to learn it. It's not that dangerous, but you know, if you are not careful enough, and if you don't know the traps, then you may collide. Many who serve aboard Contio prefer icebreaking to regular seafaring, even if the temperatures on the outside decks often plummet towards minus 30 degrees Celsius and daylight can be scarce as the winter sun barely clears the horizon. Abel seaman Teo Ulatalo is one of Contio's 21-member crew. Among his duties is securing the cables when Contio tows other ships, often much larger, through the ice. Teo first went to sea on an icebreaker in 1975. We have like three departments, engine, galley and deck. So everything actually what is outside, it's our job to take care of. When we tow the cargo ships, we have hand steering. We do it by hand on the wheel. On the winter time, of course, we can't paint that much, but that's mainly on the summer maintenance job and greasing everything and fix everything that's broken. So you have to be quite handy when you are in this work. Too. It is perhaps not surprising that Finland has made icebreaking something of a specialty. Finland has had to make icebreaking something of a specialty. But the country's dominance of the global icebreaking industry is startling. Roughly 80% of all the world's icebreakers were designed by Finns, and around 60% of icebreakers were built in Finland. Contio, launched in 1987, is one of eight major icebreakers operated by Arctia, Finland's state-owned icebreaking company. This tiny fleet has an immense responsibility. It's not merely because of the seafaring challenge that many of Contio's crew regard icebreaking as a career pinnacle. Simo Ikonen is a second officer on the Contio handling the navigation. It's really easy to see the importance of this job. We have eight icebreakers and, well, I can easily say without us this northern part of Finland would have to shut down big factories and steel mills and everything and people would lose their jobs. So we are helping Finnish economy at least a little bit. And our work is really interesting because situation and conditions are changing and sometimes we are changing ships and I think every day is different. The environment in which Contio works might look much less volatile than open sea. There are none of the waves which would cause another ship to pitch or roll. But icebreaker crews learn to respect ice as a living thing. 
Ice moves, often quickly and with potentially hazardous consequences. A safe channel cut by an icebreaker leading a ship out of port might be a path onto rocks when the same icebreaker leads the next ship in a few hours later. When ships get caught in ice, it can swiftly climb the sides of the hull. As deserts are never just sand, so a frozen sea is never just flat ice. The flows grind and crash to form landscapes which look as permanent as mountains, yet might be gone within minutes. When the flows collide, they scribble weird geometric patterns across the ice scape. When it's thick enough, however, ice does have some use as a secure parking space. Another distinguishing privilege of ice breaking is the opportunity to get off the ship while it's at sea and go for a walk. While 21st century icebreaker crews do most of their ice monitoring by satellite, nothing yet measures the thickness of flows as precisely as a drill and a ruler. Seafaring and cargo vessels give you the basics of being a sailor. But when you come here, regardless of your experience elsewhere, you start from zero. You have to learn everything. We tow, we push, we are close to the vessels, so the scope of work, the nature of the work is totally different from all the other vessels. It's something you can't learn from the books. It's something you have to learn by being there <laughs> and, you know, doing it. So, and, the, and the learning curve is very steep. Icebreakers do not feel like other ships. The lapping of water against the hull is replaced by the steady growling rumble of ice cracking and shattering against it. Driving an icebreaker requires captains to operate implements weighing thousands of tons with surgical delicacy. Collisions between vessels of such size do not have to happen at great speed to result in damage. It says much about the skill of icebreaker officers and the significance of the icebreaker fleet to Finland that even minor accidents are regarded as rare and important enough to make national news. Contio's officers all have backgrounds in other types of seafaring, whether on container ships, tankers, ferries or tugs. The climb to the controls of an icebreaker is a long one, often involving several winters of observation. Just now I'm working as a second officer, but when we gonna have next crew change, I will shift up to first officer and I'm gonna start drive this icebreaker. And that is the first main thing what I need to learn well before I can go any further. So if I will succeed in this winter, I will be driving next, next year again. If I do two big mistakes, uh, my career is not going to go any further. Finland exports its icebreaking expertise as well as its icebreakers. Arctia's ships and their crews are available for charter in the off-season and have worked on assignments as far afield as Greenland and Alaska. The basic icebreaking skills you can develop here in the Bay of Botany. And then when you go to offshore you apply what you can. And you don't have that much to learn anymore when you go, if you go somewhere to Alaska or Greenland or something. You just have to learn a bit more about multi-year ice and how heavy even the single-year ice can be in the area. But uh, this is a great place to learn the Bay of Botany. It's a bit more stable conditions. It's even possible that a warming planet might require more icebreakers, not less. Even if new sea routes open up as Arctic ice melts, ordinary ships will not be able to navigate them unaccompanied, especially as modern cargo ships and freighters are built ever lighter and leaner to maximize capacity and save on fuel. As long as there is ice, it will need breaking. The ships may get less power because companies want to use less fuel. So the need for ice breaking is not going anywhere. And the climate, who knows? We have sometimes little ice and sometimes a lot of ice. Nobody knows how the season is going to be. And as long as, as, as vessels sail to finish ports, you need icebreakers.